Imagine sitting by your backyard pool and relaxing on a sunny day. Then suddenly the pool begins to boil and foam. Everything is covered with hot steam. You're burned by light and penetrating radiation, and the remaining embers of your body are blown away by a shock wave. Only the charred walls of the pool remain. Nothing special has happened, just a small object hit nearby at the speed of light. In the last video about a falling needle, I made a mistake in some calculations. But thanks to your comments, we're now going to consider a more real situation. No object can reach the speed of light, so I'll use 99.99999% of the speed of light for the experiment. And at the end of the video, I'm going to consider under which circumstances such a situation could occur. Imagine this time that the needle falls into the ocean. If it fell into the middle of a deserted water area, nothing special would happen. But the most interesting thing would happen if the needle fell about six miles from the shore. You're a surfer who takes a board and paddles out. But there's a bright flash, and then a wave the size of a six-story house rises. You wonder where the tsunami came from on a clear summer day. You're covered by a wave. Your chances of survival are zero. But since the world's oceans cover 70% of the Earth's surface, it's much more likely that such a needle would fall far from the habitat of people. Moving at close to the speed of light, it would have the energy of 100 tons of TNT equivalent, or six bombs dropped on Hiroshima. From such a powerful impact, the ocean could simply evaporate. Of course, not all of it, but only about 2 million tons, as if you boiled the pink Lake Hillier in Australia or Blue Lagoon in Iceland. If the steam reached a height of 6 miles in the troposphere, then tropical showers would fall, stormy streams of water would flood all the streets, and people and cars would be swimming past. Not to mention the fact that fallen trees would cut off power lines, and you'd have to sit for a couple of weeks without internet. If a hundred of these needles hit the ocean and steam reached the stratosphere, then climate change wouldn't be so obvious. But it would be much more extensive. An overabundance of water vapor would lead to an uncontrolled greenhouse effect, and the Earth would gradually overheat until the oceans boiled becoming a mini version of Venus, on which, as you remember, there is no life. If two million tons of steam reached the topmost layer, the mesosphere, where the temperature is minus 176 to minus 194 degrees, then the same two million tons of water would fall on the Earth, but in the form of hail. The consequences would be unpredictable. But it would go from several hours to several days, and then an ice flood would inevitably occur. And so, in most cases, the evaporated ocean water would return to us in the form of the same water, which would simply flood everything around. But what would happen if the needle landed in one of the most dangerous places in the world, Lake Karache? Since 1951, radioactive waste has been stored there. Since that time, approximately 150 million curies of radioactive material have accumulated here. This would be enough for six of the Chernobyl accidents. In 2015, it was completely sealed with concrete. However, it's still deadly to visit with friends for a picnic. Because if you stand on the shore for 15 minutes, you could get a fatal dose of radioactive radiation equal to 600 x-rays. Now, imagine that a needle hit there at almost the speed of light. It would take nanoseconds to spread the concrete layer that has preserved the waste, and radioactive dust would be scattered within a radius of 125 miles. And how do you like the idea of a cloud of steam in the form of a nuclear mushroom and the smell of rotten eggs for hundreds of miles? 
if the needle landed near the geysers of Yellowstone National Park at close to the speed of light, then all 3,000 underground springs, including the world's largest geyser, Steamboat, would instantly evaporate. Of course, this wouldn't be a nuclear mushroom, but it would also not be pleasant. The 8% concentration of carbon dioxide would lead to death within 30 to 60 minutes, not to mention the smelly and poisonous hydrogen sulfide. Of course, you know perfectly well that needles don't fly in space. But even if there were a tiny space object that moved at near light speed, it would never reach planet Earth. Micro and nanoparticles in space instantly burn up in the upper atmosphere. At first glance, it may seem that this whole experiment was pure science fiction. But I hasten to disappoint you. Such an object could theoretically still fall on us, but not from outer space. Geneva, Switzerland, 2008 Testing of the Large Hadron Collider has finally been completed. In it, protons simultaneously spin clockwise and counterclockwise and collide with each other almost at the speed of light. All that remains is to add one more unit to our value. To achieve the speed of light, the protons would have to speed up by just 9.8 feet per second. The Hadron Collider consumes 180 megawatts of electricity per hour, like a city with a half million inhabitants. Now imagine what would happen if there were an accident inside it. There are many myths associated with the Large Hadron Collider. For example, that when high-energy particles collide, a black hole is formed, which could engulf our entire planet, and the end of the world would come. The whole planet, no, but elementary particles, yes. Imagine that in the collider there was a failure in the control system and a super-powered magnetic funnel like a transparent tornado rushed into space. At the base, the diameter of the vortex would be 16 miles and the top would cover the entire sky for several hundred miles. The flow of microparticles from space would tighten and be accelerated by the electromagnetic field and rush directly to the center of the collider. The particles would burn up right in the atmosphere, and we could be sure that we would see the comet's beautifully flying tail, until the nuclear explosion that would blow up half of Switzerland. So, in the most beautiful place in Europe, among the lakes and mountain pastures, no stone would be left unturned. Swiss residents would have one last hope. A protective screen against microparticles. But there is one problem. A change in the Earth's magnetic field near Lake Geneva would create a huge ozone hole through which the cold air of the mesosphere would rush to the surface of the Earth. And then in a couple of days, the Ice Age would come again. And in a few weeks, the entire globe could freeze. At a constant body temperature of 46 degrees Fahrenheit, hemoglobin would stop providing oxygen to organs and tissues. Tissues would be left without an adequate supply of oxygen and nutrients, resulting in massive cell death. The chances of survival for humanity would be minimal. But all this is just a fantasy, which is still far from reality. At the very least, we'd start living in a post-apocalyptic world where you couldn't go outside without a gas mask and everyone would move into bomb shelters. Humanity would have no time for disputes and strife. Only exceptional cohesion would save us. Imagine a scorched earth, a small fire, and you're sitting with friends by the fire in gas masks and singing to a guitar. Romance. Speaking of bomb shelters, did you know that Switzerland leads the world in the number of nuclear bomb shelters? In any case, there's a bunker in every residential building. Or rather, there are 300,000 of them which can accommodate 8.5 million people. 
That's 114% of the population that is provided with bomb shelters. And this is in Switzerland, which has never participated in arms races and world wars. A coincidence? I don't think so. What do you think about the danger of the Hadron Collider? Write your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to watch my analysis that can help you figure out how the Large Hadron Collider works in 10 minutes.